Okay, so let's go ahead to our class. Okay, today we are going to introduce you, I'm going to introduce you about uh, control statement, which is under chapter 5. So last week, last week before the holiday, we did talk about if and else a little bit. So today we are going to dive deeper. Uh, we can, we are going to dive deeper inside the, uh, inside the if else uh, command. And also I'm going to introduce you a several new commands, which involve recursive means that what do you mean by recursive means that is a repeating repeating command how do you repeat certain code multiple multiple times according to your preference okay so let's uh, go ahead so today uh, the objective should be that you will be able to construct a simple and complex logical expression okay and then to evaluate a given condition and to be able to construct selection and repetition problems so in uh, the course for today we will have three types of control statement involved, which is sequential, selection, repetition, and loop. A repetition, or what we could know, uh, known also as loop. So sequential, we touched a little bit last week, which is under if and else, where you have uh, you can create a condition for certain certain code, whether you want the code to be run or not, certain part of the code to be run or not. Uh, you can use uh, depending on the condition, you can use sequential, and then we have selection. You want the code to be precisely what to do in case of what condition, okay? And then we have repetition where you want a part of your code to be repeated multiple times, okay? So in real problems, okay, the solution derived from combination of all these types. So it means that a uh, combination of if, else, okay, we have, uh, for today we have four, which is uh, four and while, which is uh, the repetition. Combination of all those control statements will create your program so basically is a uh, uh, how can i say it's a a function that define your program so if you do not have all uh, you do not have the control statements that i mentioned here your course will not run as good as you expect okay most of them just a pathetic code lah. so means that you need to make sure that you do all of them uh, with consistency of the using of control statement inside your code okay so one of the efficiency as well program, okay, is how control structure is developed, which is the runtime, okay. So basically, in terms, uh, in when you look at sequential control statement, it's basically one way directly from top to bottom, okay. So you have when you start, okay, you have input, what input you have, and then you have total in, uh, the process. So in this case, you have you want to show, you want to display total income, which is the basic salary and allowance, uh, basic salary plus allowance. Okay, and then you display what is the total income and then your program finish. So when we look at the coding, so how your coding works, okay, you have uh, inside your main, you have your library up here and then you have your main and then you have the variable, you have your variable, you have your variable here and then uh, you have uh, input here, scan f, and then you have your process and then you have your output here. Okay, so here we have two process of input, one processing, and then uh, one process for processing the, the data when you get in the input, and then you have another one for output. So all of them become one uh, codes here. So and then we have uh, the basic decision statement, okay? Usually it's a two-way selection which describe either true or false. Okay, the type of this control statement is, okay, single selection, by selection, or you have multiple selection. So here, where you have selection, usually it's involved if, okay, you want the code to select what kind of answer you want to produce, you use if, okay, if there are only one. If you don't want, uh, is that is not the answer, then it's nothing. And then you have if else. If else is you have around two selection that the code can select based on the condition of the input. So you can have uh, if else here to select which is the best to produce the output. And then you have nested if. Okay, nested if, okay, uh, it's like when you give them one condition. Okay, uh, example, you go into, into a restaurant, you want to order a meal. Okay, nasi goreng, one. Okay, and then uh, in case, imagine the waiter is your, uh, your program. Okay, your program will ask you first, 
Okay, what do you want to eat today? Nak makan apa hari ni? So you said nasi goreng. Okay, nasi goreng is okay. If nasi goreng ada, then the waiter replied, okay, ada hari ni. Okay, boleh. So nested if is an if within an if. So means that after he asks you, okay, you want nasi goreng. And then he asks you again, nasi goreng pedas ke tak? That means this is a condition within a condition. If you order nasi goreng, ask the person, you nak pedas ke tak? Okay, you want a hot or not? Spicy or not? And then you can put in another selection. Okay, if you put spicy, uh, you can put in like, for example, do you want uh, telur with it, egg with it? Actually, uh, telur is another category. Okay, uh, means that, uh, how can I say? Eh? Uh, never mind, it's an if within an if, lah, basically. Okay, so next, we have case, which is multi-selection. So, multi-selection is based on uh, a lot of case of uh, choice. So, it means that, like, for example, you go towards um, a shop, okay, like McDonald's. You have set A, set B, set C, set D. So, you choose which one do you want, A or B or C or D. And in case you choose A, you got a burger with a price or you got a burger... In B, you have a hot dog with a drink, something like that. So, this is where you have multi-selection. Okay, next we have the rules of if-else. Okay, so let's just look at the code immediately. Okay, so you have if. Okay, if in the code for the flowcharts looks like this. Okay, you have this one, condition. So, if you say that if x, equal, if x is more than 0. Okay, if x is more than 0. It will go through and execute the process here. If x is less than 0, you will execute nothing and go down directly from here under the false. So if you have if and else, you have two statement. Okay, this one if only, eh? one if without the else. Okay, if you have if and else, you have one true for one statement and then you have false, okay, which is under the else, you execute statement one. So if you want to print, like for example, if x is more than 0, print pass. If x is less than 0, print fail. Okay, you can create two statements here, pass or fail. Okay, this is an example of if and else. Okay, as you can see here, you have integer age. Hello, what age are you? So, and then you scan F, what age, you can put in your age. And if your age is equal 17, okay, you can create a print F. Oh, 17, that's the same age as my programmer. If not, so you are really what, what, what is old. Okay, and then finish the code. So this is a simple example of your code. Okay, so figure out how can we do the flowchart. So, okay, so your flowchart supposedly have this above condition. So you have the start, the end, and statement one. Uh, the true is under statement two, which is Okay, print F, that's the same age as programmer. H is equal 17 is under the condition here. Okay, and then here is, oh, so you are this, this, this age. Okay, so this is example of the codes and the flowcharts is the same as what I showed here. Okay, so here is another example. Okay, the following test decides whether a student has passed an exam with a pass mark of 50. If mark is more than 50, print pass. If mark is else, means that less than 50, print fail. So this is the code here for this question. Okay. So let's ask the user to enter a mark. So if you want the user to enter a mark, you have to tell the user, enter mark, and then you include a scan F, okay, which is the percent D. And then here, the mark is the variable that will be inside the condition okay so this is an example of flowchart okay so where you have start you have the input integer a if a is more than zero true condition is that you have entered a positive number false condition is that you have entered a negative number so and then your code will end so this is your code as you can see you have here okay this is where you define integer a and then you here is where you define uh, the instruction for the user to key in what is A. And if you print out, 
A is more than zero, you have entered a positive number, else you have entered a negative number. So this is a very simple code. Okay. Okay, so let's try to do one example here. Fees for Tunas Kindergarten is 250 per month. The fees is without Tui Kwando class. Okay, if kid want to join the class, parent need to pay RM50 more per month. Develop a system to calculate monthly payment that the parent needs to pay. Okay, uh, so please try and do it in your code blocks now. Okay, so anybody can show me an example of answer? Want to share with your friends? You can share your screen with me. Anybody want to share? Okay, can I share mine? Okay, good. Wait, uh, I'll close mine first. Okay. Okay, you can share yours. Wait, yeah. Is it sharing? Okay. This is what I came up with. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. Uh, void main integer fees. Uh, so let, let me make it a full screen. Okay, so okay, so here you have uh, integer fees, total fee, choice, yeah, character, take choice. Welcome to Tunas Kindergarten. For your information, our fees monthly is 250. Would you like your kid to join our take one class? Scan app, take choice. Okay, take choice uh, Y or oh, Y small. Oh, good. Else, mm -hmm. ah, okay, 250. Okay, print. Okay, then what you want to do? Next. No monthly fee. Yang calculation ni kena buat kat luar ke? Eh, you dah, dah buat dah monthly fees ni? Dah buat dah kan? So, ah. so, so print as your monthly lah. fee is percent, ah. percent RM, D eh? RM percent D lah. RM, oh, RM percent, percent D. D. Ah, okay. Percent then you load. Hmm. Okay, and then at the back? Uh, photo fee. Ah. Okay. okay, you have a little bit problem here. What is uh, it? The card mm -hmm. integer and character. Okay, mm -hmm. you forgot semicolon. Oh, I bet. Okay, so try run first. Wait up. Oh, I did error. Well, what kind of error? Uh, the card mm -hmm. if else, at the last at the last bracket though, supposedly you mm -hmm. include one uh, semicolon there. Uh, Me, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Uh -huh. I need to go. Huh? Before what what token? Oh, okay. Ah, uh, supposedly else mm -hmm. then the bracket tu kena sebelah sebelah. So tak mm -hmm. ada space. Ha. So. Di sini. Ha. Sebelah sebelah. Sebelah sebelah. Sebelah sebelah. Okay. Yang I don't know. Jangan space. Ah, space. Okay. Else yang bracket bawah dia tu pun kena sebelah dia. Bracket bawah dia ni. Yang opening opening one. Opening. opening sebelah dia tu. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, and then if tu kena dekat juga tu. Dekat if tu bracket. If ini. Uh, dekat. Okay and then yang bracket bawah tu kena sebelah bracket atas. Bracket bawah kena sebelah uh, bracket atas. No 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 no. no. Uh, hmm. That one okay. Tadi okay. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay yang dekat opening bracket yang awak tu. Opening bracket dia tu. Okay. Ah uh, Bawa dia atas. Dekat sebelah Y okay. bracket. Okay. Okay try again. Tak ada juga. Present D. Oh. Oh awak punya ni salah. Bracket awak salah untuk print F. La ila ila wa ah sorry sorry. Saya tak nampak sangat ni ada. Oh very very. Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay you have you using wrong bracket. Ah supposedly okay lah. Test stick sometimes. So. Okay. Very like using. Ah uh, press y. press y ke? Okay okay. Uh, then let's go again press n. Cuba try press n. Kalau execute lagi sekali try press n. Tak tahu wala. Ah okay. Okay tak tahu. Okay good. <laughs> Okay, jadi function kan. Okay, uh. okay good, very good. Uh, who's it? Akmal. Eh? Okay, okay. Yes. So this is very good uh, practice. Okay, so uh, you can see from your friend, he she shown a very good works of code lah. So Akmal, can you share with your friend in the chat so that I can also run your code here? Akmal, send your 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 code copy paste aja semua. Drag all, copy paste dalam chat. Okay, so your friend can copy and try by their, their own. Boleh tak, Mab? Hello? Ah, okay, thank you. Ah, boleh, boleh, boleh. Ah, okay. 
So, okay, let's see. Okay, let's. Uh, I also copy paste from Akbar. So, it take a while if I want to put everything back. Okay. So, let's try and look at my screen again. Okay, if you your code is not working, you can also share with me. Eh? Okay, you are figuring out oh, what uh, I'm not sure so where it's wrong. Okay, we can uh, figure it out together. Okay, I can you can put your code in the message and I can copy paste and fix them for you. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, this is where you have the input output condition. This one is declaration variable declaration. Okay, you can see from uh, what Akmal did is variable declaration. Yeah. And then you have, okay, here is where you have input output process. Okay, and then you have another input output process at the end. Okay, so here you have conditional process. Huh? Okay, so here you have for input output process, you see that you can, uh, the one that Akmal did is that she create a print F asking, okay, uh, whether you want to join the class or not. Okay, here is scan F. Okay, and then you have choice here. And then you have the output process here. Okay, so when you run it, okay, supposedly there are no problem. And you can see that this is the information. And then when you play Y, K300, okay, and then N. If you run it again, press N for no, you got 250 and then you have end your program here. Okay, just for your information, for your hand on test next week, okay, it will be like this, but the question is a little bit longer so that you need to think a little bit into detail, a little bit more into detail of what uh, kind of answer is suitable. Okay, if it's a, just a short program like this, this short program, you should take around 10 to 15 minutes lah. Okay, but we have two hours. Supposedly, I will create a program that might need you to code within one hour. Okay, the question is quite long lah. A little bit long, so you need to figure out properly, test, troubleshoot. Okay, you have two hours to do that. Okay, so let's proceed with uh, the next task. Next task. Okay. Okay, thank you, Akbar, for the example. Very good. Okay, next is we have a multiple selection statement, which is also known as nested if. Okay, so net, nested if is that after one condition, you go to another condition, and then you go to another condition. Okay, so it's, uh, it's different than a normal if else. Okay, we have a lot of if condition. Okay, it's different because uh, if a normal if, you have only one uh, square box, but here you have if it's true, it goes into another condition. If it's true, it goes to another condition. And it's like this. Okay. So this is an example. Okay. Uh, usually we use this to find uh, minimum or maximum. Okay. Uh, there's an algorithm where you create uh, finding a search engine. Usually we use this one. Okay. We want to find out. Okay. Is it minimum or maximum? You can use this one. Okay. And then we have here. Okay. If X is more than minimum. Okay, if x is less than maximum. Okay, if x is more than minimum, yes. If x is less than maximum, yes. Display x is within limit. Okay, if x is more than minimum, no. Then the x is outside the limit. Okay, if x is less than maximum, no. x is outside the limit. Okay, so here is where we have an algorithm where you have condition within condition. Okay, so this is the concept of the code. You have if, condition 1, and within the if, you have another if, condition 2. And then you have another if, condition 3. So you need to remember, okay, uh, I need to highlight this one first. Okay, this one is easier. So this one, okay, here is one condition. Okay, I highlight it in red. So here another one. Okay, so this one I highlight it in blue. Okay, and then here is the last one. Is I I highlight them in uh, maybe green. Wait, not clear. Purple. Okay, 
So you can see, you have an if, you write an if first. Okay, usually the coding is copy-paste. Okay, how I could I do the coding in copy-paste? Okay, I show you. Here you have insert, place box. Okay, so the way I do code for this one, okay, usually I create this one first. If, and like this. Okay, I create this one first. And then I create else, and like this. And after that, it's a copy-paste job. Okay, what do I mean by copy-paste? Okay, so I click copy. I click here, okay, you might see copy. And then I put, okay, just to make things easier, let's put a space first. I put the copy like this. So just to avoid me from confused, put in that tension there okay so you have an if we did an if so the same thing next part okay at this bracket okay you create another if else okay so here you can create another if okay and then you can create okay usually we we make sure that the bracket align with each other so that we know that this is an inside of this one okay uh, so if you afraid you get confused with this and this you can delete a little bit more okay so here you can have okay so now you can fill in anything that you want so here is where you have the red one okay here is where you have the blue one and here where you have the purple one. Okay, uh, so it's like this. Okay, if you have to use a lot of condition, make sure that if you want to feel safe. Huh? Okay, if you want to feel safe, you can do it in PowerPoint first before you copy it and put it into code blocks. Okay, why I can say, I say you can copy. So like this one, in this case, you can copy here. Okay, everything should be fine. Okay. And then you can open your code blocks. Okay, let's create a new sheet. Just paste. Okay, if you want to paste, no paste here, right? Just press Control V. And then you can see all of them is aligned here. Okay, so if you have Control C, Control V is the best condition. Lah. So here in this case, you press Control C, and then you put in Control V here. Okay, so certain coding, uh, pro coding uh, platform. Okay, they help you by making it colored like this, like PowerPoint here. Okay, but unfortunately, code blocks they don't provide you something like this. I, I'm not sure whether it provide or not. I don't think it provide something like this. They do the color coding for other things. Okay, so you can try and test them by yourself. Okay, later on. So this is a way. Okay, uh, one example: a multi-way decision based on several condition is called nested if else. Okay, if you say if A is more than B, and inside if it's yes, it will go another condition. If A is more than C, okay, at the end is print F because A, else print F because C, okay, and then else you have if B is more than C, uh, print F because B, else print F because C, okay. This is one example. Okay, and then you have uh, this one is what we call a multiple selection statement. Okay, the same thing as uh, the condition before. Okay, you can see that here, you have, okay, condition 1, condition 2, condition 3. So, you have statement 1, statement 2, statement 3, and then here is the default statement. So, this is one condition concept, same thing as before. Okay, as you can see, and then this is one way of the example. Okay, uh, if mark is more than 80, pass grid A. If mark is else if. Mark is more than 60, okay, print F, uh, grade B, okay. So, else if mark is more than 50, print F, pass grade C. So, this one is a little bit different than a condition within a condition. This one, how can I say, yeah? it's not uh, the same as uh, this one, but in case the condition is, how can I say, the variable that you use in the condition is the same, you can use this one. 
Okay, like for example, there is only one variable that you are considering, which is mark. So you can use else if. Else if. Instead, you create if within an if, you can use else if immediately. Okay, so example here, if A is more than 0, if A is equal 0, okay, and else. So here you, have, here you can see that for A, we want to find out whether it's a positive number or is it 0 or is it a negative number. So if you are using a condition that only use one variable, it means not one variable, it's the same variable, you can use else if, uh, else if immediately. Okay, you can use else if immediately. So without using another if within an if. Okay, you can use else if. So example here. Okay, for okay, uh, let's say. I think we skip this one. Okay, so here for else if, sometimes we can utilize switch. Okay, switch, because we are using the same condition. So it's best if you use switch. So switch, you have a process that has the case 1, case 2, case 3, case 4, up until how many cases that you want. Okay, and then here in the case, it's true, it becomes a statement 1, it's else, statement 2, and else, statement n. So for the syntax of switch, it's easy. Okay, this one, uh, let's, do go, let's go directly to the quotes. Okay, so you have this one as your case years employed and you have four types of bonus bonus 100 200 400 800 so when you do the coding okay you can include just here switch the variable that you want it to have the condition in case one bonus is equal 100 break bonus case two bonus is equal 200 case three bonus 400 case four default default is bonus 800 so the last case is default so here you see that here's employed. So you can include one, two, three, or four. Okay, at the end you have this one bonus is equal 100 if it's more than four. Okay, at the end you have, you have been working for certain, certain years, your bonus is certain, certain uh, amount. Okay, so this is another example. Okay, uh, for switch here, in this case, you want to show that what selection that you have selected Okay, enter your selection A, B, or C. Okay, in case A, option A was selected. In case B, option B was selected. Okay, in case C, option C was selected. If else, okay, other than that, go to default, which is not a valid choice. Okay. So, let's try one exercise here. Okay. So, write a complete program that allow user to select which process to be executed. The program must use which statement based on the following condition. Okay, so let's try and do this one next. Okay, so almost the same. Okay, so here we change A into D, M, X, default. So here, display record. Okay, so I'll just copy paste. Uh. Display record, and then modify record. Then at the end, delete record. And then invalid selection. So let's try and run it. When you run it, you got here. Enter your selection D. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen yet. Okay. So here, you can see that I've changed the DMX. Okay, display record, modify record, delete record, value selection. And then when I run it, okay, so you can get this one. I choose D. I got value selection. Oh, why? Oh, so here, so I'm going to change this one. DMX. X. Okay. So remember, if it's a character, you need to put this uh, apostrophe mark. Okay. Okay, you have, you have D. Okay, display record. Okay, M mode. Okay, same thing that we have, like for example, 
if I put other than DMX, what happens if I put T in Felix selection? Okay, so finish with the task here. So if you want, try and run this code. Okay, I'll share the code in the message. Okay, so you can run it in your own computer. So we still have another 20 slides something. So we need to finish out uh, by today. So, okay. So let's go immediately to the next case. Okay, we have covered if else. And then we have, um, <coughs> we have switch. And finally, we are going for loop and loop or what we, we also known as a uh, recursive or repetition. Okay, so here, if you want a certain statement in your code to be repeated multiple times, okay, multiple times, depend on the problem condition. Okay, there are two types, okay, which is we use a pre-test repetition statement and we have post-test repetition statement. So here we have uh, three choices, which is while, do while, and for. So the while is basically a condition where you have repeat the statement until certain condition is met, okay? Okay, it means that it does not know in advance how many times the loop will be repeated. So the statement will be repeated, okay, as many times as it can. Um, I think as many times that uh, it can occur up until the condition is met. Okay, if you say that while x is less than 100, okay, x is, okay, if less than 100 means that as long as the statement x is less than 100 means that it will increase it will not increase oh this one uh, i got confused okay while the condition is not met you will continue repeat the statement so the, let's just uh, stay with that for a while okay so basically you have the condition here which is the expression okay if it's true the statement will continue back return back return back return back return back return back return back until it get false and goes downwards so where do you use this so usually we use it in enterpin code. So while code is not equal 1094, enter pin code. Okay, means that uh, you repeat unless the key the pin code is accepted. You keep on repeating asking for the correct pin code. Once you get the correct pin code, which is 1094, the system will print pin code accepted here. Okay, so this is the, the example of the code, integer main, and then you have input code 1094. While input is not equal 1094, print F and enter, enter pin code. Okay, and it will scan the input and print F if pin code is accepted after the while. So while is also like if you have this bracket here. You have this bracket here. So let's uh, demo. Uh, let's see how it works. Okay, I'll demonstrate here in the code here. So I'll delete this one. Okay, you have integer input then you have integer code which is 1094 so here you have while with a condition and a bracket so you have put a space in the bracket and what is the condition input is not equal not equal 1094 so next you have print f Enter pin code. Okay. Then don't forget your semicolon. Scan F. Send D. And okay. Then next we have. Print F. And finally, zero. So what happened when you run this one? Okay, no error. So you can see here, I'm trying to enter my pin code. So let's enter some random numbers. 
9999. I cannot. Okay. You like ask me again. So I enter 88. Enter. Okay. Still wrong. 6666. Still wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4. Still wrong. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Blah, blah, blah. Still wrong. So when I enter 1094, what happened? Pin code accepted. Okay. So this is uh, the concept here. Where you have repeatedly uh, run programs until the correct condition is met. Okay, so this is where you use while. So now, using while, control statement, write a program to print a number from 1 to 10, 10 times repetition. Using while control statement, write a program that calculate the total number from 1 to 5. Okay, so let's do the first one first. Use while control statement, write a program to print a number from 1 to 5, I uh, 1 to 10. Okay. So, let's use the same one. Print X. Remove the input. And let's start from beginning. Okay. So, I'll do the first one first. And we try to follow with the second one. Did you X? Let's start equal X equal... Zero. Okay, and then you have while space condition and record. Okay, so in while x is less than ten. Okay, so here you have print f. So you will create here x is equal x plus one. Okay. What do I mean by x equal x plus 1? Okay, later on I will explain. Print f. So we put here x is percent d. Dot. We put a space here. And the condition is x. Okay. Then at the end, you put in print F, finish. Okay, just a simple code here. So save. Okay, let's run it. So here is what you run, eh? X is equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Finish. So here, what does it do? Means that it repeat 10 times. Okay. So start with X is equal 0. So when it goes X is equal 0 here. Okay, X is equal 0. What happened here is that, okay, uh, X will go through here while X is less than 10. Okay, it's condition pass. So X will go inside. And x will be x plus 1. So the new x is 0 plus 1, which is 1. And then it will print x is 1. And then we'll repeat again. Okay, x is still less than 10 because x is 1. And then it goes down here, new x is equal 1 plus 1. So next is x is 2. And then it will repeat again up until it goes up until... 10, and when it goes, while well, x is equal 10, x is less than 10, yes or no? No. So when it's false, it will not go inside here, it will not repeat, and it go directly to finish. So this is one example of repetition use. Okay, so now let's try and do the second one. Okay, anybody wants to try do second one? So demonstrate the second one. Anybody wants to demonstrate the second one? Anybody? Try and do it first. A simple code. Okay, you can edit from mine. Okay, you can edit it from mine. I put in the message. Okay, you can try and edit it from mine. So the second one is a little bit tricky, yeah?
Okay, you don't do not need to you do not need to change a lot of the code. You can use my code that I have given you and change a little bit. You can write the second one. Okay, let's just proceed. Okay, so for the second one here, you need another variable. Integer total. Let's just create integer total here. So you have x is equal to x plus 1. And here, you create total is equal total plus x. Okay. So only this. So here you change it to 5. Okay, only this. So let's try and run it. Finish total equal percent D total. Okay. Okay, only this. So let's try and run it. Okay, so you can see I run it. Okay, x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now what I'm doing here is total is equal to total plus x. Is the answer 23? No, supposed to be 15 only, right? So where did I do wrong? Mm, let's take a look. Where did I do wrong? Can anybody tell me where I do wrong? So we have five loop here. So loop first loop. Okay, total should start with zero. Okay. Okay, let's try again. Whether this is the correct answer or not. Ah. So total is 15. Okay, it's supposedly correct. Okay, I did not define the zero for total. So supposedly total become a random number there. Lah. I'm not sure where why where it got the total before. Okay, so once I made the total is equal to zero. You can see that, okay, the answer is 15. So here, you see that the total will start with 0, x will start with 0. So while it enter into x is less than 5, x become 1. And then total is equal 0 plus 1. So new total is 1. And then it goes repeat the second time, x is still less than 5. And then you got new x is 2. And then total, previous total is 1. The new total is 1 plus 2 is equal 3. And then we continue again, repeat 3, 4, and 5. Once it's finished, you got the answer as 15 here. Okay, do you have any question? Any question? I think somebody might have any question. Uh, somebody might have some question here. Uh, saya punya tak keluar total. Tak keluar total? Uh-uh, yang 15 tu Kenapa dia tak keluar 15? Dia keluar berapa? Dah keluar, dah keluar. Salah. Dah keluar dah? Ha. Dah, dah. Okay. Any question? Any question? No question? Okay, you have no question. Let's proceed to the next one. Okay, so next one is do while. Okay, do while also almost the same as while. Okay, the do while loop, similar to while loop, but the test occurs after the loop body is executed. Okay, means that you do the statement first and after that, the condition is check. Okay, so the statement means that the statement comes first and then the checking occurs. So like for example, enter pin code. Okay, while code is not equal 1094, if it's true, okay, it will go repeat, 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 repeat. Once it becomes false, okay, pin code accepted. So do while, okay, here you can see you have the statement first before the condition. 
Okay, so let's try again with the same question here using do while. Okay, so it's easy. Just remove the condition at the top. Here, the condition here. Put it down here and replace the top one with do. Okay, so let's do the second one first. Okay, let's uh, save and run it. So you might see the answer like this. Okay, it's the same answer. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then you have finished total as 15. So it's almost the same as it's almost the same as uh, the while, except that the condition is being assessed after the statement. Okay, so means that either do uh, do while or while it's uh, okay for you guys to use. Okay. So next is four. Okay, this one is a little bit tricky. So for four is one of the most used statement other than while or do while. So what is the benefit for four? Okay, I'll show you later. So usually, okay, it will execute the specific statement inside the, the condition. Okay, as long as it's true. So uh, this one is a little bit difficult to understand. I'll go directly to the uh, variable, the algorithm first. So you have initial value. Okay, initial value. And then you have the condition. Okay, and then you have the statement. And then you update the control value. Okay, and then based on the control value, you create the expression. So what is the control value actually? So for four, you have, like for example, here you have integer i. i is equal one. For i is less than 10, i plus plus. So print f the i. Okay, so here you are conditioning a code. Okay, let's go directly to the codes. Uh, okay, let's remove this one. Create one. Okay, so you have integer i. i is equal 1. Okay, for i is equal 1. i is equal less than 10. i plus plus. So you create bracket here, print f, i is send d, slash n, i. Okay, oh wow. Okay, so let's take a look at what is the result first. Nothing written out. Where did I did wrong? Oh, oh, I did this one wrong. Okay. So this is the answer. Automatically, I got 10. So what happened here is that you have I start with 1. So when I is equal 1, Okay, it goes into the for loop because i is less than 10. So the printf will print i is 1. And it will repeat again this statement. Okay, is it another i is less than 10? If it's yes, repeat again. Up until, and then it increase the i by 1. Go i equal 3, i equal 4, i equal 5. It will keep repeating, repeating, repeating. i equal 6, i equal 7. Okay, why does it repeat it like that? It start with 1. And once, okay, it go up until from this line until the end. Once it's reached end, it will add 1 plus plus. Okay, it will add 1 to the original i here. So i, when at the beginning it's 1, it will be 2. Okay, when it goes 2, it enter again, still less than 10, it will repeat, add by another one, become 3, repeat, repeat 4, repeat 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And up until the end, it becomes 10. Once it becomes 10, it will add another one, become 11. And when it is 11, 
is no longer fulfilling this condition and it will end the program. So this is example of how we use for. So here, let's just use for. For control statement, write a program that calculate the total number from 1 to 5. So let's try and calculate the number from 1 to 5. So this one, simple one. So you just create i is less than 5. i is equal 5. Okay, so while, okay, we create another variable here, total. So you have here, you can just add total is equal total plus i. Okay, and then we have print f. So print f we put at the end after the for finish. Print f total. Yeah. Okay, so let's try and run it. What happened when you run for like this? Oh, again, I got the total is 23. Yeah? So I need to define total is equal to 0. Okay. So here you see that i is 1, i is 2, 3, 4, 5. Total is 15. So as you can see here, same like what we did in while. I will start in 1. Okay. Okay, i is less than 5. As long as i is less than 5, we will conduct this total. Total is equal to total plus 1. Uh, total plus i. So i will be added when i is 2, we will add to total. Okay, 1 plus 2 become 3. And then we, when i is 3, we'll add with total, become 6. And then when i is 4, we add with total, become 10. And i is 5, we add in total, become 15. When i is equal 6, okay, it will not add to the total. And it will jump directly towards the end. Print f, okay, total is 15. So this is where you got the answer as 15. Okay. So, do you have any question here? Do you have any question? Any question? No question? Okay. Not okay. Okay. So, let's proceed to the next one. Okay. So, let's try uh, this one. The initial value in the initialization part doesn't have to be 0 and the incrementation value doesn't have to be 1. Okay, this is one of the benefit of 4. So, like for example, you want the total. So, in this case, you want total of i is uh, 1 to 5. Let's say you want a total of i. Okay, let's just remove this because it's the same. We define again. i is 10. You want the total of 100. And you want a total between, uh, you want a total of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. What is the total of those? So here you can create i plus 10. Okay, so means that after 10, it will add, it become 20, and then it become 20, become 30, 40, 50, until 100. So what is the total from 10 until 100? It means that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So you can run it here and when you run it oh oh oh, oh what's wrong oh something wrong ah there's something wrong here okay where, where did i make mistake okay so here supposedly i have to put in i equal i plus 10 okay sorry okay so again we write try it okay so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 10 at 90 100 so the total of all of this is 550. So you can create the total based on this one condition. Okay, so the first loop, I start with 10. The second loop, I will be incremented by 10, which is 20. So the next loop, I is equal to 20. So the total will be 10 plus 20 and continue up until 100. Okay, so this is an example. Okay. So then we can have nested loop. Nested loop is a loop within a loop. Okay, a loop within a loop. 
So loop within a loop, usually we do it in two or three dimensional, where you have X, Y, and Z. You want to do X first, and then you want to do Y, and then you want to do Z. Okay, in this case, we have I, J, K. Okay, let's try and do this one first. Okay, you have, uh, let's just copy paste away. Okay, so I copy and I'll paste. Okay, I have this code where you have, you have the original for loop here with this bracket. Let's uh, tidy up a little bit. Okay, and then you have the second loop with this bracket. Okay, and then you have the third loop. Okay, which is the same, uh, same, same alignment with the second one. So let's try and run it. What will happen when you run this code? K is undeclared. Okay, let's try. It. So you can see this is the output pyramid. Okay, so here you have empty and then you have star. Okay, and then you have uh, here you have empty and then you have star basically. And then you have a uh, space for you to go downwards. So as you can see here, we are creating a graphic for this code. Okay, a pyramid. Uh, very interesting, right? So basically, when you see graphic, Originally, it started with looping four. Okay, so this is where you have empty space. Okay, empty space. Okay, for the first one, for i is equal one. Okay, and then j is one, and then j plus plus until from six reduce with i. Okay, uh, so how can I mention this? Huh? Okay, for first one. J is equal 1. J is supposed, when I is equal 1, J must be less than 5. Okay, J must be less than 5. So when it print here, okay, empty space must be less than 5. Okay, so in this case, after 5, uh, as long as it's less than 5, it will print empty space. After the empty space, we will go towards K. For K here, as long as K is less than 2 times i minus y, uh, i minus 1. So i for the first one is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus with 1, 1. So it only print the star once. Okay, and then we go to the second loop of i. Okay, when you go to second loop of i, j is less than 4. As you can see, the empty space reduced from 5 to 4. So when the empty space reduced from 5 to 4, Okay, the star is increasing because now k must be less than 2 times 2 minus 1. So k must be 3, less than 3. So they will print the star 3 times. Okay, and then go with i is 3. When i is 3, j empty space is 3. k empty space is 5. And then when i is equal uh, 4, okay, we go j empty space is 2, i uh, K will be 7. And then we'll increase up until I is equal 6 where okay, J empty space is nothing. Okay. And then K the star will be 6 times 2 subtract with 1 is 11. So you have 11 star here. Okay. Once it becomes 6, completed everything, finish the program. So here you see you get a triangle graphics here. Okay, there are a lot of codes online for C++, very interesting graphic codes using recursive, okay, using for while, do while. So you can try and copy and run them by yourself. Okay, so I'll copy this one and you run it in your code. Okay, I'll put it in the message. You can see them in your codes. <coughs> so this is another example just to display star. Okay. So we have uh, a lot of examples that you can look at. And in the lab session for this week, I will include some more examples for it as well. But uh, up until this point, I don't think it will appear in the... You don't need to do this kind of, uh, this kind of graphics in the test 
Okay, most of our tests is involving calculation. You can do the calculation uh, based on what we practice during the lab. Okay, so before we end our class, do you have any questions so far? Any question? Any question? Ada soalan tak? Anybody? Hello? Tak ada, Doktor. Tak ada soalan. Tak ada soalan. Okay, before we end our class, okay, I will, I would like to take your attendance. Okay, please. Um, Doktor? Yes. Um, saya rasa macam setting saya ada problem sikit sebab bila saya save file, dia jadi lain. Jadi apa? Uh, saya share screen. Ah, okay, saya stop sharing. Buat tak? Ha, right. Ha, dia jadi macam ni. Okay, saya tak nampak apa-apa. Awak tak share apa-apa. Eh, saya rasa saya share lah. Oh, shit. Kita tekan ni. Okay. Dia jadi macam ni. Buat tak? Macam mana? Uh, memang macam ni ke macam mana? Okay, okay. Apa dia? Eh, tengok, cuba tengok, 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 Um, saya tak sure file dia supposedly save macam ni ataupun lain Ok, bila you create uh, You build kan mm -hmm. Dia akan create 3 file Oh ok Ok, satu C++ you punya file C Ok, C file Ok, macam saya pun Ok, my entire screen sekejap eh Macam saya pun, bila saya create uh, Documents Okay, macam saya pun, bila saya create, saya akan ada file, 3 file .z, .o, .ese dengan .c Okay, yang ini kita panggil object file Yang ni kita panggil binary file Faham tak? Hello? Hello? Ah, yes, yes Okay, yang ni kita panggil object file Yang ni .o ni kita panggil object file .exe ni kita panggil binary file So, bila awak run Bila awak run apa-apa program yang awak build ni kan Awak run Awak build ni, dia akan convert awak punya .c untuk create .o dengan .exe ni. Faham tak? Bila awak build, dia akan create .o and .exe. Dan bila awak run, awak akan run .exe. Sebab tu software, kita tak boleh nampak code dia. Bila awak download software, kan, awak tak boleh tengok code. Because the code is the .exe file. Kita panggil dia executable file. So, executable file is what runs lah. Bila your program running, when you press the run button, okay, even if I press this one, okay, this is uh, dot, to see kan, bila saya press ni, kan, bila saya press, oh, tak boleh keluar, saya tak letak ni. Supposedly, uh, kalau yang ni, eh, uh, saya kena letak get car. Okay, so build. Okay, contohnya saya save sini. Saya build. Okay, saya akan dapat .ac baru. Dan bila saya double click, eh, saya double click, saya akan keluar yang ni. Okay, saya double click yang ni. Dia keluar window ni. You see? Sama tak window dengan run tu? Sama kan? Kalau yang ni pun, kalau saya run, dia keluar benda sama. You see? When you run, you run the exe file. You tak run the .c file. .c file tu is your code. But when you compile your code, you become .exe. So, like I mentioned in the first chapter, the code is the script. The exe file is the movie. When you create a movie, you have a script and then you develop the movie, right? Okay, C is the script, EXE is the movie. Okay, so we have the .exe yang ni lah yang you guna untuk your 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 program lah. 
So you can distribute the .ese to your file, to your friend. Okay, look at my program. You can use my program for uh, whatever purposes that you do. You write a program, you want to sell your program. When you sell your program, you sell it .ese. You don't sell to .c. .c is your copyright. .exe is your product. Okay? Understand? Faham, Doctor. Okay. Thank you.